What's up guys, it's Roanoke Gaming here, and this time I'm going to be talking about the greatest threat ever known in our galaxy, responsible for almost wiping out our race once, and then one of the smartest races next. They literally contain the ability to turn all known and some unknown races extinct. I am talking, of course, about the Flood. Today, I will be going over the combat forms of the Flood and discussing how they consume, reintegrate your biomass, and use you to their ends. So head up to the attic, hike up those pants, because the Flood is coming. So the first question really is, what did the Flood come from? I'm going to give you the quick and dirty version because a lot of this is a video for another day, which will be coming out, so keep an eye out for that. The Flood were created, uh, kind of created, by the Precursors when the Forerunners betrayed them as they wanted to give the mantle of responsibility to the humans rather than the Forerunners. This creation was inadvertent, however. The Precursors retreated out beyond the galaxy and turned themselves into what was essentially like informational dust. This dust eventually corrupted over time, and this became the Flood. Humans happened upon a ship that actually contained these vials of dust in them, and they didn't really know what it was, so they just kind of took it, and as it turns out, some humans on a planet had a certain type of animal that when they used this dust, it would actually form these desirable uh, mental traits in these animals that they wanted to basically keep going, and also it would cause patches of fur. Well, over time, the animals started to change, and long tendrils started to come out of their backs, which the other animals would then eat, and it just kind of started going sideways from there, and eventually a flood outbreak happened as the flood supercells jumped species over to humans. Now that we're all caught up, let's move on to the next portion, which is how do the flood cells do it? As mentioned previously, the Flood have something that's called a Flood Supercell. These supercells can infect your body, converting your cells on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, saying a lot of cells there, for its own means. Exceedingly grisly, it works its way through your body. Flood are able to infect both living and non-living bodies. If you are living, this will eventually kill you, and with 99% effectiveness. Some hosts have actually survived long enough and maintained consciousness, such as Private Jenkins, but I can assure you it was an absolute hell to be like that. There are a couple ways actually to be infected, and the first one is direct combat with a flood form. Any injury sustained can actually lead to infection of your body by the flood. The injury essentially gets some flood supercells in it, but very, very minuscule amounts almost not enough to infect you, but still it is enough to infect you, and it will actually take longer, but eventually you will succumb to this infection. The next is inhalation. The flood is an atmosphere changer. They will begin releasing spores that will eventually work their way into all hosts on the planet. Everything can be infected, and everything needs to breathe. The spores enter the lungs of the host and begin shutting down what is essentially your life support. You will die rather quickly when it reaches the late stages, unfortunately, and there's really nothing you can do to stop it once it's inside of your lungs. The next way is just straight up pod infection. An infector pod latches onto you and digs into your chest cavity. Very unpleasant. They then use these tendrils to send out a signal that counteracts your nervous system. This signal will then cause your heart to stop, and on top of that, the signal will pretty much stop any conscious thought that you may have as it creates this extremely loud buzzing noise inside of your head so that you're not even able to think. So not only is it killing you, but you won't even have your last moments to think. You will just hear a screeching noise. Humans are going to be the smallest of the flood combat forms because humans barely pass the biomass needed to actually become a combat form over, say, like a carrier form, which I don't know if this is based in lore or not, but judging by the actual look of the carrier pod forms, the ones that walk around and then explode, they look like they have ungoy legs or kigyar legs. 
So next time you play, take a look at that, and let me know if I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Humans are easily infected, and just one interaction will lead to the rapid transformation. If infected with a strong pod form, a human will die in less than a minute. Only two known instances exist of this not being the case. Sergeant Johnson, due to his time in the Orion Project, when they altered his body to the point where it actually killed most people, or Private Jenkins, which we will discuss at a later point, but for now, most humans, upon the pod entering their chest cavity, die immediately. The tendrils shut down the nervous system, and that's pretty much it. This combat form that is created from the human is the most agile and quick out of the four forms I will discuss. These forms will still retain memories of how to operate weapons, fly ships, and combat techniques. However, the brain is no longer really needed at this point once the information has already been acquired, so the head is pushed over the shoulder and just kind of hangs there, and if you hit it or knock it off of the combat form, it won't really affect it at all. A long tendril comes out of the right arm, and humans will keep some basic form of themselves during this transformation, barring the head over the shoulder and the long tendrils, they will still look somewhat human-esque. Next up, we've got everybody's favorite religious zealots. The elites are going to be larger than a human's flood form. Much like a human, though, elites are infected by a pod forcing its way into the elite's chest and then shutting down the nervous system. Elites, however, are tougher to infect than humans, as they possess greater armor with energy shields, and these energy shields actually destroy flood pods on contact, which I'm sure most of you know. When an elite is infected, they can be killed just as quickly as a human, and the transformation leaves them with a larger, like, chest cavity. Their entire chest is much bigger, and probably because a pod has literally forced its way into that. The head is slumped over, and anything holding up the neck has been dissolved and restructured for the needs of the Flood. The combat form of Elite is going to be stronger as well. Able to flip Warthogs with one hit, it is very powerful. The lower body of an Elite form remains the same, but the upper body undergoes drastic transformations. So the Spartan Flood form is not really seen in the game, and there's really no record of it taking place in the campaign anywhere. However, during multiplayer, this Flood form does make its debut. Standing as tall as what you would expect an average Spartan, this type of Flood form is just downright creepy looking. A long sword-like hand has been replaced on its right arm, and the armor has fallen off somewhere along the way. There still remains the, what it looks like, the gel layer actually on the form itself, and what I'm kind of hypothesizing is due to the armor that was on the Spartan to begin with, encompassing its whole body and how strong it was, when the Flood took over, this actually forced the Flood to keep a human-like form, or at least a Spartan-like form, uh, while it took over the body and then shaped. So I believe that's why they still sort of look like that. They also still retain their energy shield, which makes them devastatingly powerful. The head remains upright and has been purposed for the Flood now. Due to the augmentation process of the Spartans with their bones, a thick callous plating of very hard substance is covering the outside of the form. The left foot of what was a previous Spartan has strangely been altered the most. The right foot appears to still be in armor. The face has folded in on itself, covering most of the facial features. Red muscles can be seen underneath the armor plating as well. And from what it looks like, the Spartans have been altered into such a great killing machine by humanity that the Flood form prefers it to much alteration. It is kept just as deadly, if not more so, than they were. Either that, or my previous hypothesis, it also could be that, like I said, the armor kind of keeps it in a mold. The Brute Flood form is one of the largest forms you're going to actually encounter that's not a pure form. Brutes alone are a force to be reckoned with, and possessing more strength than an Elite or a Spartan, they are able to berserk and take out enemies when the tides turn against them. Brutes cannot be infected before their armor is destroyed, however, so no shields and no armor are kept when the Flood take over. An Infector form forces its way into the Brute by cracking open the jaw and separating the lower jaw from the skull itself which just... ow. 
Hopefully, they are already down, but I imagine like any other form, brutes can be infected while still alive. The infector pod then kills the brute and begins the transformation. A long tendril comes out of left arm, and the Flood will actually prefer up close and personal encounters to take down enemies rather than using weapons. This is probably due to the brutish nature of the brutes, and essentially a little piece of the original brute carries over and then is used by the Flood. Okay, so I know I've mentioned this before, and this is purely speculation on my part. I believe that the exploding pods from Halo 1 are actually Ungoy and Kigyar because they do not possess the biomass necessary to create a f actual combat form. I believe it was in Halo Wars 2 we actually see an infected grunt become a pod carrier and I just want to throw it out there because I always thought this back in 2001 when I was playing and I was I think I was like 12 years old or something like that and I know I'm dating myself right now but it looked like to me that these guys were always the grunts because where did all the grunt bodies go? What were they actually used for? Or were they just pods? So our next one is Hunters, or the Lekgolo. So the Lekgolo can't actually be infected as they do not possess a central nervous system to be infected. This is actually quite useful as they could be sent in to combat the flood forms without fear of infections. However, the flood forums, as previously stated, can flip over a warthog with little to no problem, so even the hunters themselves can fall victim to just the sheer strength of the actual flood themselves. Alright guys, well that's all I have time for today. I hope you liked the video over the flood combat forms. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as we are up to 15 subs in two weeks, and I could not be happier about that. Please leave a comment on what you want to see next, and I will begin learning and working on whatever you want to see. Next video I will be going over the morphology of the Brumac from Gears of War, so make sure you definitely check that out. And as always, y'all take care.